Oh, here we are. It is Friday, June 23rd, 2023, and this is the weekly video. We do these every Friday. We talk about what's going on in the Asian and Chinese art market, Japanese art market, Korean things, whatever comes along. If you're new, you can subscribe to the channel here and uh, check out our website, bitemout.com, where we carry a lot of uh, information, research information. There's a forum and all that, and you can uh, go there and uh, learn more if you're interested in the topic of, uh, of antiques uh, to do with Asia. And it's a fun category. Uh, one of the things I wanted to get back to was yesterday we did a video on the uh, Rob Michael sale and the Waddington sale. And there was some, I, I did a, talked a little bit about a vase that's in the sale. And I wanted to go get back to it to explain why it, it may be that uh, like Rob got this. And he said it's one leave mark, but probably Republic period. Because this is a type of vase there's been a lot of confusion about. Um, it's a very well-known type of jar that was was made during the Wan Lee period uh, when they when they turn up and they can be absolutely authenticated as being from the period, um, especially Markin period. Uh, they, they can bring anywhere from uh, the, there was one at Christie's uh, not long ago that was estimated at 50 to 80,000 uh, pounds. Other examples have been around that have been estimated higher, um, uh, over 100,000. So this is the jar. And the, the difficulty in these is that they make such they made such good copies of them at different times. And uh, here you have one that has sort of one of these uh, characteristically sort of burnt, dirty looking bottoms on it with the mark recessed uh, below it. And when I was looking at this, I was saying I've seen some of these in the past and I got I dig I dug back through live auctioneers and came up with some other examples uh, that have been around that have had prices all over the place. And I want to illustrate uh, how difficult uh, it is to uh, uh, pick these things out uh, and determine whether or not they're, they're a period, republic, or are they brand new. And I'm going to show you a few examples that we came up with. And there was one jar in particular that was recycling um, through auction houses for a couple of years back in 2017 and 18. And this is the jar. All right. And this thing has an Oriental Ceramic Society label on the bottom. It's got a label from uh, Sparks. Uh, uh, I mean, Sydney Moss, rather, in London, old label and uh, so forth. And it looks, you know, it looked pretty authentic. It sold for $17,000 in March of 2017. And it either it didn't get paid for or it was shill bidding. And it was re-offered by the same auction house a few months later um, as a uh, Wan Lee Mark blue and white floral jar. Um, and uh, by by this is an outfit called Sada's Auctions in Fairfax, Virginia. I don't believe they're in business anymore under that name. Or they don't seem to be. Here's the first time it went through under their name. And uh, then the, that jar uh, a year later turned up in uh, Massachusetts at Max Marco Brothers, another auction house that's gone out of business, it seems, or is now running under a different name, which is not an uncommon thing. And again, it's exactly the same mark, exactly the same jar, not only exactly the same jar, but exactly the same pictures. Here's the here are the photographs that were on on the uh, Malden, uh, Massachusetts auction at Max Marco. This was the photograph they used. And then if you uh, uh, hop back over to the one, the photos from Seda, there's that. It's exactly these are exactly the same photos. So for whatever reason, it didn't sell down there. <clears throat> and they cycled it through and set it up to another auction house. Maybe it's an auction house they're affiliated with and all this. But there is um, a, 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 a true thing going on with uh, uh, Chinese gangs uh, that are involved in the Asian art market selling fakes. And they move them around the country. And, and uh, there's a lot of shenanigans going on. And uh, uh, this time, it, then it sold for rub. Uh, what does see here? It sold for eighteen thousand in March of two thousand seventeen, and then um, let's see another example turned up at at Eddie's auction house. This is a different one, very similar. Had a crack in the bottom um, and so forth. This is a a twentieth century copy, complete with crack. Same identical decoration, identical shades of blue, identical border decorations, and so forth. And what it looks like is they just made a bunch of these. Um, they started popping onto the market around 2013 and 14, and they began turning up. And and uh, again and again and again, they get offered until somebody somebody buys it. 
uh, and it's it's a difficult thing. And uh, one of the ways you can spot is an aside auction houses that sell fakes and copies is go to go to the live auctioneers and go down. Here's his sadas and go down and take a look at their past auctions. And if they look like this with all these real, if those of you who have collected for all recognize that these all look like very rare examples. When you see this many turning up at an auction house nobody's ever heard of, be suspicious, of course. Be very suspicious. And the same with Mar Max Marco. Here's the same sort of stuff. They seem to have an endless supply of rare looking, especially bronzes, because bronzes are heavily faked. Um, the bronze market has as many fakes in it as the, as the porcelain market. Um, the jade market's not far behind. All right. There's a, there's a lot of copies and this is what you're up against. These kinds of pieces, they're very convincing. They're very good looking and so forth. And one of the, one of the pieces that they, they began mass producing, um, at some point about 10, 10 or so years ago were these, um, uh, Wan Lee, uh, Shao jars. Here it is. Here's, here it is. All right. And these are the kinds of things that if they sell and they get some legs under them in the market, um, suddenly there's a lot more of them. And we see the Chinese ceramics companies moving around. The people in Jingdishan, they move from one category to another. Ten years ago, it was, you know, Sung Guan type pieces and crackle pieces that were flooding into the market. And then, of course, before that, it was fakes of rue wares. Um, there are a number of uh, uh, there's a, a YouTuber out there that uh, many of you have seen his videos where he claims to have, you know, dozens of pieces of rue ware, which, of course, is nonsensical. But they, he, they all they, all those were acquired back when rue wares were being copied. And now, of course, they're copying transitional wares in a big way because transitional pieces are taking off and so forth. All right. So that's the that's one of the difficulties I think that Rob was up against when he got this jar was how do you date this uh, without getting yourself into a jam with 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 buyers? Um, they're very convincing looking. This could have been made in the Republic period, certainly, and it could have been made later. It's one of those areas that's very, very tough. Um, I have not seen many Republic convincing Republic pieces of Wan Lee wares, um, uh, but I've seen a lot of modern ones. So it's it's just it's 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 a very tough category, all right. So keep that in mind. The other thing I wanted to mention too was that those of you that uh, used the global pages or maybe found this auction, this was the auction that was at Andrew Jones's in L.A. Uh, just finished up a couple of days ago on the 23rd, and uh, they had a, they had some really good results. If you if you're interested in uh, Chinese export wares, high end Chinese export wares, um, they had some very nice pieces, sort of on the in the line of uh, some of the pieces. Pieces like that Brunk has sold in the last year, or Stair Gallery. Uh, they seem to be, all the, these auction houses seem to be getting some very nice pieces of export wares. Um, and they had several book lots. And the book, the porcelain brought very, very strong prices, uh, very good prices. Um, the, even those little groups of mugs that we talked about and other things, these lots um, and other videos that they were selling, they all did very, very well. But the books went soft. And this is an example of it. Uh, many of you are looking at this and you recognize some of these books. And in this in this selection of books, this is all one lot, is China for the West by David Howard and John Ayres. The one and two volume set comes in a slipcase. It's a great book. Um, the Chinese Pavilion. And then you have the, 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 the iconic da uh, Chinese Armorial Porcelain by David Sanctuary Howard. And then down below it, you had the Connoisseur's Guide by Michel Baudelet of Chinese Ceramics, which is a, a really good book to read. Um, it's not too specialized, but it talks about uh, uh, characteristics and, and appreciation for Chinese art from, from a connoisseur's side more than from an academic or historical side, uh, you know, where they focus on dates and, and uh, the minutiae of the making of it. This is more on the aesthetics. Of, of Chinese art and then Oriental Ceramic Art by Bushel, published by Crown, uh, another uh, sort of standard book on the topic. And then Chinese Collectors Through the Centuries. This was a, a Tuttle collection, a Tuttle book rather, which they, they did reprints, but they did some fairly good reprints. Um, this was a nice, a nice lot. Um, Chinese Armorial Porcelain, for example, we've seen this book sell for anywhere from seven hundred to over eleven $1 hundred dollars. Uh, China for the West, sort of the same pricing, and then you have all the other books thrown in. Somebody got all of these for six hundred and fifty dollars. <throat> and always keep in mind with books is that you can get them shipped book rate. 
Um, and it's very, very inexpensive through the U.S. Postal Service. Uh, they could, this probably would have required two boxes, but it, w- it would have been peanuts compared to using priority mail and other other services through the post office. You know, t- $20 or something and shipping, little handling charge, and you get all these great books. And the same thing happened here on this lot of books. This was 30 porcelain reference books. Um, and in it was was Gompertz's Chinese Celadon Wares over here, which is a good read. <clears throat> it's one of the standards on the thing. And then you have uh, 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 Jeffrey Golden's book, Garden's book, Oriental Ceramic Mark Influences on U- European Wares. The Copeland Collection by Bill Sargent. This was published by the PBD Essex Museum. And it's the, the Mrs. Uh, Lamont DuPont Copeland's collection. It's part of the DuPont family. She gave her collection to the Peabody uh, 20 or so years ago. And, and Billy wrote a book about it and he's a wonderful writer if you uh, i've known billy for a long time very nice guy uh he's now working with bonhams and uh uh, he's written several good books and this was i think maybe his first big book is very very good also the choice of the private trader by david howard and uh and and then over here um uh wg galan's book which is a fun read i have a copy of i have all these books actually uh and what's fun about this book galan's book is it was a look at the chinese collector market um in the in the early part of the 20th century it's illustrated and uh the the spelling is different because they were using um a a, a different a different way of pronouncing uh, chinese names and words and things but you'll figure it out but it it goes into what they were collecting back then you'll see a particular emphasis on Kang Shi wares and then you have um uh, uh early Chinese port and by, by I think this is by uh was it gray or somebody and but then the Ming porcelain book by um uh Daisy Goldschmidt Leon uh, a connoisseur of uh, uh Ming ceramics and this was a Rizzoli book so it's very high quality printing and it's well written she's she's she was uh, she's a who's a is a brilliant collector and so forth and then there's a bunch of other porcelain books on China trade and so forth and this was a very good lot as well <clears throat> 30 books including also some auction catalogs thrown in I went to pay just $750. Not bad. Not bad at all. So um, uh, good on Andrew Jones. We're going to keep an eye on his sales because they seem to be getting better and better. And uh, he provides lots of information, you notice. This is one of the things I always talk about is auction houses that provide lots of information. Um, it means they're serious and uh, um, good. Uh, it's good to see. All right. Now, uh, oh, back over to eBay. What happened last week? Well, it was a good week uh, and there were some very good prices, but I'm going to start with this. This was a, a bowl that I talked about uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I got an email from somebody uh, uh, this week who got this bowl. Uh, it's one of one of the, one of the, one of the regular viewers here. He picked this Kangxi bowl up for sixty seven dollars. And I have no idea why it went for so little money. Um, this was a nice bowl with a silver rim. had a it had a hairline in it, but uh, but the hairline was minor. And the decoration with this khaki amon decoration was very attractive. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. Um, uh, somebody said maybe it's maybe it's it's 18th century and not Kangxi. Possible, but that foot looks awfully good under there. And uh, the enamels look very good and the way the bowl is molded. And the Japanese also made these molded and ribbed bowls as well. Uh, years ago, I had one that was a Mari, 18th century Amari ware that was done very similarly. But the interior here where the ribs are, it was all lacquered. Um, and, but it was a, an, an interesting um, a version of the same type of bowl. This was a good piece. It was about nine inches, eight inches in diameter, I believe. And sold for sixty-seven dollars and forty cents from Stubsy Wubsy. So somebody got a great buy. That was a really good buy. I was glad it was one of you. And he did. He did what I always joke about. You know, just leave a bid. Leave bids. And um, even if they're crazy low bids, because every once in a while this happens, and you and you add something very nice to your collection that's authentic, nice silver rim on it, and um, sixty-seven bucks. Not bad. Uh, and then this, this was very nice. We talked about this last week. It caught my eye. I just thought this was a nice piece of this amber glazed pear shaped bottle, uh, 18th, possibly early 19th century, but a nice old bottle miniature. Uh, I think this was around four inches or so in height, um, uh, 10 centimeters tall. So what was this? Um, yeah, it was just about four inches in height. Yeah. 10 centimeters. Um, Went for $542. Miniature pieces that are old uh, are really becoming in demand. 
Uh, and I, I, I can I can see why I've always felt that way. Uh, we saw that great collection of miniatures at Bronx a few months ago, and uh, here's another one. Um, and this did quite well too. Uh, $542, nice example. And uh, then over to this. Now this was something I thought was just great, and it was a mother of pearl inlaid soapstone with peaches, um, with uh, 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 immortal women coming down, ascending with food, so forth. A panel of calligraphy in, with inlaid mother of pearl into the soapstone. This is really nice, and and it went very inexpensively. And the reason these go so inexpensively is that there's not a lot written about them. And there aren't a lot of prices to go by because these are sort of quirky folk arts. Um, and what, what happens is people that see this will go looking around the Internet for it. And they can't find a price for one like it. Um, and they'll dig and dig and dig. And they're out there somewhere, I'm sure. Some auction houses clearly had them, other have had them. But they're not indexed anywhere and they're difficult to find. So if people can't um, uh, find a comp or a comparable example to get an idea of value, instead of just leaving a price based on the fact that they really like it, they just skip it and don't leave a bit at all. And that's a very uh, 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 dangerous way to not collect because you can acquire some absolutely great things if you follow your gut. Um, in addition to always leave a bit, I always you know, I should probably say more often, follow your gut. And if you see something you really like, how much you like it? You know, you like it enough to throw some serious money at it. Because somebody got this for next to nothing, $116. Um, but that beautifully bit of soapstone, it was about six inches wide. It wasn't tiny. It was a nice size. Um, it would be fun to own, handle, and enjoy. But uh, it, somebody stepped up to bat for it and uh, bought it uh, very, very inexpensively. And that's the kind of thing. When, when Eventually, somebody will get into these crafts, these arts and crafts things, carvings, inlaid pieces, oddball, sort of oddball pieces, different, you know, sort of outside the normal collecting realm. And they'll start writing books about them. And uh, it, suddenly there'll be a lot of interest in them because they, they're, they're ridiculously undervalued, in my opinion. Ridiculous. Uh, and then over to this. Well, you, you got to keep in mind that back uh, not that long ago, um, pieces like uh, we've talked about many, many times about the Butler collection, when Sir Michael Butler started collecting, um, the things he was buying, there wasn't much known about them. Nobody was that interested in them. There was no demand in the market. And when he started buying them, he even said, you know, where were these made? Where did these come from? These are different. And uh, over time, scholarship, a lot of it was his scholarship, um, uh, uh, created the knowledge base to understand them. And uh, he, he built up a massive collection. The famous uh, underglazed red piece, we talk about things. I'm going to just touch back on that. We talked about like that, that carved soapstone piece with the mother of pearl inlay being undervalued. Back in the 50s and 60s, when, uh, when, when uh, Mr. Butler was collecting, uh, many of the pieces he bought, he paid very little for them, $5, 10 15 $20. Uh, you can read about what he paid. The uh, vase that sold, the uh, underglazed red vase uh, that sold for about $800,000, um, I believe he bought from Marchance in the 50s or the early 60s, <clears throat> somewhere in there. Uh, I think he paid si like six or $700 for it. That was it. Sold for almost a million, uh, just a hair under. Um, and that just shows you it's, it wasn't the piece wasn't great and wonderful. It was that nobody had focused on it yet. And once people begin focusing on things, demand and interest grows. And suddenly, you, you, if, you, if you're not very, very wealthy, you're priced out of the market. And uh, um, it, it, it's, it's an interesting lesson. All right. Now, on, on to this. So you have to follow your gut. Follow your nose. Um, it was this, this pair of uh, <clears throat> Ming vases with turquoise glaze. These were very nice. Um, they had a, a couple of little areas of repair, as I recall, on, on one of them. Um, one of them had a little repair. Where was it? Hold on. There it is. This is the repair up in here. But that's minor. Uh, these are made of pottery, and they tend to absorb moisture, and they tend to flake their uh, glazes a bit here and there, which is sort of normal. Uh, this one, somebody very nice and smartly put a felt pad on the bottom because these are these are stoneware, and they're fairly scratchy on tabletops. You don't want to ruin your furniture. Uh, but this is a, Ming, a pair of Ming Ming examples and that, that classic turquoise that they used, nicely done with handles. The molding on it was very good. And it brought, you know, $508, which is not a huge amount of money for, uh, a, a, you know, a nice piece of, um, you know, uh, 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 six, 16th century ceramics. Uh, very, very nice. And they were about nine inches tall. So there you go. And then over to this, the Chongchen uh, 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 
Chan Chi to Chan Chen period um, a plate with the rabbit on it. There's the rabbit, like him. It had a little nick out of the rim, brown dressing, and and again, very similar to many examples in the Butler collection from the from his that period that he made famous. Uh, this plate sold for thirteen hundred and ten dollars. And as a case in point, this this dish back in the in the nineteen sixties probably would have cost around five dollars, literally, or four dollars or ten dollars, but very very little. Um, and today they're they're heavily collected. All right, and that was from the, the ceramics and collectibles guys, Shangri-La guys, I call them. And then over to this, uh, early Thai Indian yellow enamel silver uh, gold banded teapot. This was at Joni's up in Canada. Um, uh, nice looking piece of uh, gilded uh, silver work. Uh, these are very thinly made. The metal on these is extremely thin, so they're very prone to denting, but very fine quality. And we're starting to see some interest in this area, uh, Indian and Thai, and that part of the world, because there's a growing, uh, rapidly growing uh, economy, as you all know, in India. And there's a rising uh, middle and rapidly rising upper class in that country. And they're beginning to buy their, the art of their culture, the way the Chinese began buying art from their culture back when the Chinese economy came back and, and, and China went into its early prosperity, uh, the, one of the first things that happened was you saw newly newly minted well-to-do Chinese families saying, you know what, we should bring home some art uh, that was taken out of the country over the years. And that's what they did. And I think you're going to see a similar sort of thing happening with Indian art. This sold for $1,346. And it wasn't that long ago that this pot would have struggled to reach 100 uh, so it really shows that things are coming along. And then this, this is another piece of Indian silver that they 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 sold at Joni's. Very nicely done. This sold for $3,300. Beautiful work, though. The details on this were really quite exceptional. Love the handle. Look at this handle, a snake handle coming down, coil, the coiling snake handle on the side here with a figure. Lots of nice details in it. Uh, beautiful silver. If you like silver work, boy, the Indians made some beautiful silver. They really, really did. Um, they had this sort of matte finished ground stippled and then these high point polished areas and all that good stuff. And this did very well. It brought $3,350. All right. And then over here, the uh, Kaki Amon uh, uh, style, probably uh, Kangxi to Chinlung period, somewhere in there. These are very tricky to date. Had a couple of hairlines in it. But, uh, you know, clearly uh, Kaki Amon uh, design, Japanese design, used on Ch Chinese porcelain. And uh, it's interesting because you, you, you have these where they did Kaki Amon patterns. And in Japan, uh, around the same time, uh, they were doing blue and white pieces and so forth, mimicking Chinese export wares from the Ming Dynasty. So there's, there's a lot of exchange between the cultures when it came to design and decoration and so forth. And the uh, 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 Japanese, of course, were collectors of Chinese porcelain for a very, very long time. And uh, uh, there, there you have this uh, very pretty bowl with uh, Japanese decoration on it, which makes it an interesting contrast. Uh, $597 it went for. Uh, nice looking bowl, about seven or eight inches in diameter or something like that. Um, uh, 15 centimeters. Okay, six inches in diameter. It wasn't quite that big, but still a decent size. Still a decent size. And then over here, this was a Stubsy Wubsy over in the UK. He gets good things. He's a good seller. Uh, had this nice pair of uh, Nonya Straits uh, 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 uh or Straits bowls, as they are known, with these OG sides. They come down. OG just is, is this, this curve. And, you know, on furniture, it's actually a fur OG is actually a more, you hear it more often in terms of furniture uh, with OG legs, OG brackets, that kind of thing, OG bases. It just means curved. Uh, but this is an unusual form to see in Yonya straight pieces. And the color palette's quite unusual. The color combinations are a bit unusual. And uh, as, as such, because it's an early, these were early 20th century, probably maybe Republic period, um, late Qing to Republic anyway. Um, listed as very rare and he's correct they sold for thirty five hundred and forty three dollars and these were uh, pretty small these are not enormous um 14 centimeters in diameter so they're not they're not big big bowls they're they're five inches or so in diameter each thirty five hundred and forty three dollars so it was a good week 
um, uh, over there. Um, uh, the, 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 the selling uh, uh, prices seemed to be pretty stable, and there were some silks that did fine and, and all that. So keep, keep your eye on it. Anyway, if, you, if, you, if you're not familiar with the uh, newsletter page, if you come over to Bid Amount, it's here. It's listed off the top, the top menu here. We've been doing that now. Uh, last week was the 583rd uh, week that we've done it. Um, because we do it once a week. And if you want to get involved there, you just hit this button, sign up. And you can sign up for free. And all it means is you're going to get an email um, in the afternoon, generally on Fridays, unless I'm traveling or something, uh, saying that the, the uh, weekly video has been done that you're watching right now. The page is updated. And uh, down below will be all the stuff. The problem um, with eBay, though, they still have not resolved the uh, the, the images um, and what seems to be happening, I just want to touch on this again because we're trying to get it resolved. It seems like a lot of the images that aren't appearing are, are, are they, they stop appearing after they've sold in many cases, and sometimes they don't. Like these have these these items are still active, but these aren't, and there's no image showing. And then up here, there's a whole bunch that are not showing. And earlier in the week, many of these were showing. They have since sold, and now they're not showing the pictures. The, the links are all good. You can still read the description. If it looks interesting to you, just go over and check it out. Um, it's, they all work just fine, except that you don't get to see a nice picture to go with it. And uh, we have eBay has no idea why this is happening. Um, but it's not a shock <laughs> if eBay doesn't know what's happening. Anyway, the things that are coming up this week, there's just a few of them, is this, this very nice 19th century, uh, uh, well, they called it a Yuhu Chuping. I guess it is, but it, the shape is a little bit off. But it's it's generally that form of uh, foo lions and silk balls. This is a very pretty vase. And the vase and stand uh, measure 19 inches tall, so it's a pretty big piece. Uh, the seller speculated that the stand is probably might be Zeton wood. It is not Zeton wood. Okay, I looked at it very very carefully. If it was Zeton, um, it would be it would be worth several thousand dollars on its own. It's not Zeton. Um, it is uh, just a, a dyed hardwood. It's a perfectly good uh, stand. Um, there's a, a, a picture of it here. I think they have a couple of other pictures of it. That's the stand. It's beautifully carved. I think the stand is later than the vase. I think the stand was done later, um, as is often the case. And uh, it's got a hairline in it, and it was drilled on the bottom. But it's a big vase, good-looking foot rim, 19th century, probably first half of the 19th century. It's up to $576. Should bring somewhere in the 1000 to $1,600 range, maybe a little more. Uh, it's, it's, it's it, despite the damage because it's, it's a bit unusual in its decoration. Um, the decoration is a bit unusual. The shape is quite good. It is large and has a very nice stand with it. And that stand, just so you understand, if you went to buy that stand, first try to find one that'll fit the piece is hard enough. And then finding a good one that looks good like this one, um, even though it's probably uh, lacquered or, or ebonized, uh, uh, hardwood, uh, would probably cost you three to four hundred dollars <throat> at least. If you go to a fancy shop to buy it, it would probably cost you six hundred. Anyway, uh, this has got a ways to go, but it's a nice thing. It closes on Wednesday next week, and it'll be on the newsletter page. And then over to this, this biscuit uh, glazed uh, figure of a, of a sort of a female figure, almost like a, it's not a Guan Yin, <clears throat> a robed woman with a spotted deer. And this is a, a nice size one. It's not, it looks like it might be small. It's not. It's actually almost 10 inches tall. Beautifully done, beautiful condition. The bottom of it looks like it's got very good age to it. Certainly, I think 18th century, uh, possibly Kung Shi period, but very, very nice. Very, very nice. And I love the deer. I love the yellow on the deer. Uh, check it over. Um, right now, it's up to uh, just $248. It closes tonight. It should jump. I hope you. I hope that we'll have this video up in time for you to bid on this if you want to. It closes this evening on Friday the 23rd. It's only up to $248. It should get up to $800 to $1,000 or a little more even. Uh, so do check that out. And then this, the uh, the jar with the lid. I'm going to talk about this. Normally, these jars turn up fairly often, but I had a number of inquiries this week from people wanting to know if I thought it might actually be a Kung Shi period jar. Uh, no, I do not. 
This is a, a, a mid to late 19th century jar. I think they dated it as first half of the 19th century. It is not. It is a, and those of you that buy these, I, I can hear you agreeing. This is a late Qing example. Uh, it's nicely done. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's not early 19th century and it's definitely not Kangxi period. Um, so don't treat it like it is and don't bid on it as though it is. Uh, there's the lid. It's got a nice lid with it. It's a good package and it's good size. Here it is next to a bottle of wine. So it presents very well. It's got this nice dental molding here around at the top. Those like teeth like devices coming down and it's up to $448. It closes tomorrow should bring in 600 to $900. It's a good looking pot, but it's not Kang Shi and it's not 18th century. <clears throat> and now over to this, speaking of miniatures, so a few minutes ago where we have this is, is closing in a couple of days on closing on Sundays is very nice. 18th century uh, uh, gilt bronze uh, miniature, uh, sort of like an inset stick vase. Uh, very attractive, really, really nice. And uh, this is, you know, this is one of the new categories. I said, uh, people that want to buy miniatures, um, this is a, a, a good looking one. The top of it is nicely made, uh, very sturdy in its construction. Um, there's a, so it has a little incise decoration down the side here. You can see this slight vine decoration. It looks like there's a bit of wear to it. This may be older. You may find that it's older than, than 18th century when you get it. Uh, I think it probably is. It could maybe be. Oop, excuse the little skip there. Back to this. The, something went funny with the recording. Uh, is this is of course the, this little this little bronze. Like I said, uh, uh, probably 18th century, maybe older very attractive and i think it's got a ways to go i think it should probably bring four to six hundred dollars somewhere in that price range but it's a, a beautiful little piece and these miniatures are becoming increasingly popular it seems and this is a very fine one and it's got some nice decoration incised into the body and all that good stuff so check it out <clears throat> and then over to this the uh wan li uh bottle uh, a well-known bottle form lots of these were exported out of china they turned up in the in the netherlands and and, and all throughout Europe, uh, very, very popular, late Ming uh, pieces. Uh, this is a nice one. The Michelari's got this one. It's got a couple of lines in the bottom. They often do. Here's the bottom of it. But the decoration is good on it. It's a well-known type, uh, easily uh, easily uh, researchable. You can look them up. You can find lots of examples. You find them in old paintings and things like that with Wan Lee bowls beside them often. Uh, it's up to $433. It ought to get up another probably probably about triple that before it's done um the, the hairlines might hold it back a little but expect it to bring probably uh 900 or a thousand and up to maybe 1400 dollars. good looking piece and then over to this this was one of my little happy surprises i found this this morning and I, I look on there almost every day, but I did a, sort of a deep dive in to see if any interesting Japanese pieces turned up. And this was it. Uh, a very nice uh, sake bottle, Tokuri bottle, with uh, uh, Edo period, with very nice uh, gilt and silver gilt decoration. Uh, wonderfully done. The quality on this thing is amazing. It's about it's a hair, just a hair under eight inches in height. But very, very fine um, on, on this uh, uh, lacquer on a wooden body. The only thing wrong with it is um, up here. You'll see there's a break. And uh, over here, you'll see where a piece of it broke out and they stuck it back in this. Um, I would, I, I, I would, this is such an attractive thing. I wouldn't care. Um, you know, you know, get it repaired or have somebody uh, fill it in, uh, get a, 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 a very good woodworker to sort of do a little repair on that if they can. Uh, or just put something in there and just, you know, that's unreversible later and you can just color it in in black so it doesn't catch your eye every time you look at it. But this is a really nice example. But remember, this is silver gilt. Be very careful what you clean it with. Damp rags, damp paper towels only. All right. It's up to just $53. It closes Sunday. Uh, don't be afraid to throw two or three hundred at it. It's a nice thing. If you're going to, if something you want to keep. And then this, this uh, uh, root wood carving of elephant form um, with a stand, 19th century. Who has this? Epcor One has this. Um, I love these old root carvings, as many of you know. I just think they're terrific. I think they're so undervalued. And this is a nice one. Um, and there's the uh, the elephant's trunk here and these beautiful wavy uh, wavy areas in the burl and the leg coming out and so forth. And they, they can look very abstract. <clears throat> and uh, here they gave him, I think, a glass eye, it looks like. 
Uh, just terrific thing. And uh, look at the price on it. It's only up to a dollar fifty three. It closes Sunday. Um, uh, you know, get after that. That that could be a great buy. Put a couple of hundred dollars on it. You might you might get a bargain for yourself, like the guy that bought the bowl. Um, that's way under the money. All right. And then over here to this, these Anway decorated Kung Shi cups. Uh, they're about three inches in height. And uh, if you don't see the Anway decoration, there it is. And Anway is just incised into the porcelain decoration that uh, it sort of Anway means sort of a surprise or a hidden feature, uh, something you discover. Um, and you often can only see it um, when the light rakes across it at a certain angle. Transitional period brush pots, for example, were famous for having bands of Anway decoration around the upper part. And this is a Kung Shi cup, and it goes throughout the body except where they did the cobalt decoration. So the, all of the surrounding area has this wonderful uh, peony blossoms or, or, uh, or chrysanthemum blossoms all over it. Nice looking cup. Uh, looks like it's in quite good shape overall. Um, is that an old hairline? Maybe, maybe it has an old hairline. That's about it. Uh, they're only up to $9.56 for the pair. They're three inches tall. They look fine. Um, other than the little tiny hairline in the body, or that may be a glaze line. Maybe write the, get a hold of the seller and ask them. Um, because they're up to just $9.56 and they should bring two or 300, I would think, 150 minimum. Um, and right now they're at nothing. So uh, it's a bargain. Uh, and then this, the incense burner. I like this incense burner a lot. I saw it last week, put it on the, on the, on the, uh, on the list. It is, uh, uh, it'll be in the newsletter this week. This is Chinese. It is not Japanese, though some people might think it is Japanese. It is not. It's Chinese, probably 18th or 19th century, but beautifully made, wonderful color. The warm cocoa color on this is great. The casting details here, the, the masks, very finely done. The underside, car, you've seen these bronzes they did sort of during the Republic period where they use this circling dragon with a mark in the middle, and it's always very blurry and unreadable. This is the good, pretty clear, crisp casting. Uh, I think this is an older one. Uh, very nicely done. There's that mask. Nice patina. This is an applied patina, and they did a beautiful job with it. This is the kind of patina you generally expect more typically of the Japanese to do, because uh, the Japanese bronze guys were amazing with patinas. They really, really excelled at it. Uh, but this is just lovely. The structure, the proportion, the scale. I think it's great. And it's only up to $75. Should be, it should bring 600 to 1,000, 700 to 900. Uh, because it's quite nice. It's just a hair under eight inches in height. Beautifully done. Nice patina. I don't see any damage on it. So do check that out. And then over here to this, this is that uh, cafe ground vase that's up at Joni's that closes in a couple of days. Closes on Sunday. It's up to $271. It's been drilled. It has a drill hole in the bottom um, and uh, down there. Uh, judging by the foot and so forth, it certainly looks 19th century to me. Beautiful glaze. <clears throat> now, let's see what the, the, there's the side of the foot there. Um, all looks very legitimate. And uh, it was obviously uh, made into a table lamp at one point in its life a long time ago. And uh, you can put it back as a table lamp in your house if you want. It'd be a beautiful lamp. But I love the warm cocoa brown color. It's about 14 inches high. So it's a wonderful size. It's a very good size. And if you want to buy it to put flowers in it, all you have to do is plug the hole in the bottom and uh, it'll work absolutely fine. Uh, if you have vases like this, especially in the spring, put flowers in them, enjoy them, enjoy them with flowers in them. It makes all the world a difference. And um, um, it's up to $271. Ought to get up to 1000 before it's done or 1500 But it's a nice looking pot. It's, it's only about a quarter of the way or half, a third of the, a quarter or a fifth of the way to what I think its value should be. Uh, so do check it out. They have a, also there's a flambe glaze vase that Joni's has up right now. It looks pretty good. So do check that out. All right. And that's it for the week. If you haven't subscribed to the, us over on the uh, Bitamount site for the newsletter page, you ought to do that and subscribe to us here on uh, YouTube. And uh, you won't miss any videos. We do them uh, at least one a week, sometimes two or three in a week. And uh, we, we, do, we find something worth talking about. We'll do the video. All right. Leave a comment. Give us a thumbs up. If you haven't, We they help us in the algorithm with uh, YouTube. The more thumbs up they see, the apparently the more they like the, the YouTube algorithm likes us and we want them to like us. So we get some, uh, you know, get, get new subscribers and bring new people into the community that enjoy Chinese art. And uh, that's it. 
So have a great weekend and I'll see you all next week. Okay. Bye-bye.